Today we got a high value video, something I've been holding on for a while, waiting for a chance to drop it when I get a lot of subscribers and I want to show them that I could provide good value through my video. A lot of you in this past week have joined through Reddit, Facebook groups, and recently I did a video with Josh, and I think with all three of those, I jumped about 50 subscribers in one day, which is really insane. So thank you so much for every single one of you who took the time to come and check out my channel. I make a lot of content on a lot of different things because that's just who I am. I like to do multiple things. I know you guys are into multiple things. And if I make a video about something that doesn't interest you, don't worry because the next day will be something else. So if I make a video today about programming, tomorrow is going to be something about videography or cinematography, or something that I'm just randomly interested about, like uh, making a B-roll of my dog running around at the park. Today I'm gonna try and make a video that applies to my experience but try not to make it about me because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me talk about myself for 15 minutes. I think you guys want to watch me talk about something that you might think is for you which is boot camps. I think a lot of boot camps are absolute bullshit. The one I went to had a giant amount of bullshit in it while it had a lot of value in it and I'm gonna break it down in a lot of details, it's going to be a long video, but I really hope that it will help you make up your mind if boot camps for you or not for you. In most of my videos I can improvise, but this video I've got so much information that I actually have to take notes and look at them while I make this video just because there's so much to keep track of. I went to a boot camp that was 10 weeks at the time. It's called Lighthouse Labs. It's in Montreal, Canada, Toronto, Vancouver. It's pretty much like the Lambda of Canada and it's in person full time. I'm gonna be relating my experience to that specific bootcamp, but I know a lot of boot camps are very similar and have a lot of the similar issues. So don't try and apply it to just mine, but try and look at any bootcamp you wanna to go to, even if it's not a big name one, try and see if any of these mistakes have been done there. First thing I'm gonna go into is should you go to bootcamp? And I'm gonna say, depending on your financial situation and depending on your mental situation. Specifically Lighthouse Labs, I think over time is becoming less and less worth it just because of their curriculum and the cost of it. Just in Montreal, which is not their like main hub, it's over $10,000 now, which it was a lot less when I went. And most of the lectures were held over a video call. So you would show up and the video call would show up from the Toronto class. So you weren't even getting the instructors in your face, you were getting them through a camera. So it was kind of annoying that you had to come in. It should, they should have just made it remote for cities like Montreal. If I could go back and choose a remote bootcamp or in-person, knowing what I know now, I would have chose the in-person just because the one thing, I wanted to keep this for the end of the video, but the one thing that made it worth it for me to go to that bootcamp was the mentors that I met. They were people in the industry they were running their own companies, they were doing this stuff, and me being that annoying kid who asks questions about everything and, and questions everything, I learned so much other than code from these guys. Like one guy who ran his own business freelancing and I would sit there all day and ask him questions about how he started the business and how he did this and how he did that. And just, I, w I learned so much more than what I paid for, so it made it very valuable to me. While there were others who were really good at programming and didn't really need the bootcamp, it was more of like a self-confidence thing. So they would come in at nine in the morning, finish all their work and leave halfway through the day when you paid for 12 hours a day, six days a week. So like I said earlier, it's what you take out of it. Here is where the video is gonna get a bit long. I'm gonna break down every single week of the 10 weeks that I was there and tell you exactly what we were doing. And this is almost like a cheat sheet for you guys who are not sure if you should go to bootcamp. I would say try and do like week one to like four on your own and see how that goes. And then from there, you can decide, maybe it would help to meet some people who can really help me dial down and, and, and become good at this. Or I think I could do this on my own and I'm gonna keep trying. Definitely, even if you suck at learning on your own, you can't concentrate at home because you got kids or dogs or cats or whatever, you should be trying it anyways because these are things you can't avoid and it's better to discipline them than to avoid them. And it's a mistake I make often. I don't know about you guys, but I uninstall games so I don't feel tempted to play them. But I, really, I should install the games and say, hey, when you're done your work, you can play. If you're not done your work, then you can't play. All right, so week one was the Think like Dev week. This week was absolute bullshit. We all came in, finished our pre-course work, which was learning the basics already. And this week was a basic week. So it was pretty much a repetition of the pre-work, which seemed useless to me. 
I would take it out if I could, or I would replace it with something more like computer science later on into the bootcamp. We go, we had a bunch of readings like what's GitHub, what's pair programming, what's Git, things we all had to learn before we came into the bootcamp. We tried Vim, I hated it. Then there was a lot of things on, there was a lot of practice questions throughout the bootcamp, not just on this week. And they were pretty much code war questions that seemed to be copy pasted and then themed towards the bootcamp. And that was the really annoying bullshit part of bootcamp that I really tell people to avoid. A lot of bootcamps out there are really generic code war questions that they just pull off those sites and make a little curriculum out of it. And they're like, here, learn code, give me $20,000. And they're just repurposing content and giving it to you. And that's what all boot camps do. But some boot camps give you extra value, like in mine, where I got those mentors who sat with me all day and I asked them all the questions I want and I can bug them and that was their job. Whereas remote, I feel like it's a bit different because you can't bug someone as much because they're not next to you. You kind of have to message them in Slack and say, hey, I'm stuck on a problem. Can we get in a call? And then if they're not busy, they get in a call. It's a lot easier to, to get a lot more value out of someone when you're in person. And I know that's not the nicest thing to say. It is a little bit annoying, but I paid for it and they are paid to sit there and answer my questions. So I'm gonna take every dollar of value out of that and try and get as much as I can, even more than I paid too much money to sit around and be shy and not wanna ask questions because, oh, I don't wanna bother them. No, I, I paid for this. I wanna get my value out of it. Also, some readings on most of the bootcamp, but specifically week one, we're just redirecting to other sites, which is really annoying. So I paid a bunch of money. So they would tell me, hey, go read this node document on the node site, which is free for you to read anyways. Week two was the full stack introduction. This was the first week where we took HTML, CSS, JavaScript on the front end and node JavaScript on the back end and started to work with the two together. We made this URL shortener app where you pretty much like bit.ly or, or Google or whatever, like you, you give it a really long link and it returns to you a really short link and you can track the usage through it, how many people clicked on it, how many people clicked on it and how long they stayed on it, all these like analytic details from a short link. Then we made like a little GitHub clone using the GitHub API, something very simple, but it was a very productive and I learned a lot from it. The pre-work and week one was mostly front end. We didn't, we didn't touch any back end up to now. So in week two was an introduction to things like CRUD and HTTP, HTTPS and learning what's the differences, why use one, why use the other. And we would quiz each other and we had little quizzes, but None of these quizzes would determine if you stay or not. It wasn't like, oh, if you fail this quiz, you need to leave the bootcamp. That was later on and I'll get to that. We also learned about like cookies and then we jumped into Express leading into week three. Front end advanced, which is what I'm gonna call it. It's not really the name for it, but we learned jQuery, we jumped into more complicated CSS using SAS and LESS and all those preprocessors. Then we did some Ajax and Axios, so pretty much the front end side of talking to a back end, but not setting up the back end. Then we went over a little bit of web security, and every week we had the speaker come in from a bigger company like BusBud or whatever, and they came and told us about how they do something specifically. We had in a UI UX artist come in and teach us how to use Sketch and how to make these designs and prepare everything, and every week was something else. Then week four, which was backend week and partial hell week. Let me explain. The backend portion was using Mongo and Postgres and connecting them into little applications, which is one thing that worked really well in the bootcamp. We made a bunch of little applications, and then at the end of the week, we'd start a big application for that next week. So it was a lot of repetition, it was a lot of making mistakes, and that we learned from those mistakes very fast. Then at the end of the week, we jumped into making teams and starting our midterm project. Now our midterm project was a way of seeing if we're ready for the second half of the bootcamp. We're week four, the bootcamp is 10 weeks, so we're going to be jumping in into the middle of the bootcamp. And this is where they evaluate you and say, hey, you need to come in next, next cohort or you're good, continue. At this point, if you don't back out, your money is locked in and you have to come into the next cohort or you could just leave your money and go. There's no turning back. My team made this like, we made like an Uber Eats clone where it worked all through texting. So you would text like a bot with your menu order and then it would text the restaurant and say like, oh, Mike, 
number one, do whatever, whatever, ordered a cheeseburger and fries. And then it asks, how long do you think till this will be ready? And the cook can say 25 minutes. And then it sends a text back to me saying, hey, you can pick up your order in 25 minutes or whatever time it was. It looked pretty weird. The design was all over the place, but it worked and we passed and we moved on to the second half of the boot camp. Week five was a work from home week. So you can work from home, you can come into the office. I came into the office because I was like workaholic mode at the time of this boot camp. I was working like 14 hour days on the train on the way there. I was coding on my phone. I was programming like all over the place. I don't recommend it. I don't regret it, but it was a lot of code and not enjoying life. So that was the computer science week, week five. We jumped into object oriented programming. We jumped into some trees. We did some small algorithms. We learned time complexity, a little bit of big O notation and how to calculate. I made a video on that if you guys are interested. And I made a video on binary search. I'm gonna leave the links below. If you enjoy that stuff, it's perfect for you. If you're not understanding that stuff, perfect videos for you because I try and make it as simple as possible while making it so you can still code those things. We went over recursion and then that was the end of the week. Then week seven was React where we did mostly React, a uh, little bit of Redux. We looked into a bunch of different things that jump onto React like Lodash, uh, Axios with React. After that was week seven, which was probably one of the hardest experiences I've had in my life when it comes to education, just because it was such a curveball to what we were currently doing. So we were doing React with Node and little things in between. And then they hit us with Ruby week, which like, like it's called, it was Ruby. It's another language. We've never used other languages, or at least I haven't. I know a couple people have used like MATLAB and whatever when they got their degrees, but I've never touched any other programming language than JavaScript and Ruby is something a lot different. It's an object oriented programming language. So it's, it's just different. And we also jumped into rails at the same time. So it was a Ruby on rails week and it was pretty tough cause we did testing, which is something we did with JavaScript. But again, we're doing this all in another language. So it was, it was a good way of learning to convert our knowledge to another language that we don't understand at all. We didn't have to make projects from scratch. We didn't have to actually learn the language. We had to learn how to transfer our knowledge, which was probably one of the most valuable weeks at the bootcamp and I actually really enjoyed it. I do wish that it wasn't Ruby because Ruby is just getting old and as much as I love the language, I hate Rails with a passion. It's just not good. It's not practical. I would have made it Python or Java or something else. And you know these bootcamps, they're not gonna change their curriculum because why fix it if it's not broken? We had this one project with Ruby where we had this like full e-commerce site and it was broken, it looked terrible, and we pretty much had to go in and be like the the recover team. We had to re, you know, revive this website, fix the whole back end, fix the front end, but the front end was very simple, it was just like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, no, no React. And that was actually a pretty fun project just because it was so hard to get it done. But once you got it done, you felt so good about yourself and it was a nice boost of confidence for the next two weeks, which are even worse. Week eight, nine and 10. Well, the starting of week eight was the finishing the Ruby. So Ruby was really like, let's say about eight days. And then we had 10 days of the, the final project. Now the final project was a project we would be presenting to employers like Amazon, I can't remember any other big name companies, but Amazon was supposed to come. I'm not sure if they ended up coming. We had a couple big companies there. So it was a lot of pressure on this because a lot of people are there, you know, every dollar invested in this. They've got not much money to go back to after the boot camp, And you know, you're putting your heart and soul into this. I was working 15 hour days for 10 days, going nuts about this project with my team, just trying to make it work. We made a phone app which was pretty much like your directory for recipes, like a cookbook. But this thing was like Facebook of cookbooks. You can share your cookbooks. You can like other people's cookbooks. You can have your own little like recipe book. You can add recipes. You can pull recipes out of there. Just everything to do with making food. And it had like these really cool animations and I'll put some pictures up on the screen if you guys want to see it. And I'll put all the links below of the code and everything, but I don't recommend going through it because it wasn't the best code but it did work and that's what looked really good to employers at the time. And one thing I would love to do, one video I would love to make is maybe even getting my team on here and 
them explaining to you what our presentation was like. Because you're sitting in this room, three rows filled with employers. They're all staring at you, you're sweating bullets, and suddenly they ask you a question and you have to answer in a way that, that looks good. I was pretty much a full-time debugger. I was finding out issues, I was fixing them. If something didn't work on the front end or in the back end, I would have to fix one of them. It was a mess, but it turned out really well. Employers really liked us and we all got hired within like two weeks of presenting that app. It was a really great experience and you can see I have a lot to talk about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I try not to make it all about me, but I really wanted to talk about this experience because it was something that was really big in my life and really made a big impact on where I am. And it's funny that I started with that and now I'm not even programming full time anymore. Now I'm doing it part time and trying to jump into other things like videography and cinematography and mix the two together. Hopefully out of this video, you can kind of get a sense of if you're into boot camps or not, if it's for you or not. If you have questions that are specific or just any questions at all, feel free to join the Discord. There's a link below in every single video or just comment in the video if you don't want to join the Discord and you don't want to take the time to install it. I recommend it. It helps us a lot. I'm trying to get to 100 people in the Discord. I think we're at like 50 something right now. So it'd be really cool if you could join. Again, I appreciate every single one of you who joined lately. It means a lot to me. I really want to make it a full-time job to be on YouTube and monetize my channel and be able to invest back into my videos. Like, I really want to make code competitions and video editing competitions where you guys try and compete and compete for a prize. And even if you lose and you don't get the prize, at least you have a project that you can throw on your resume and put that towards a job and you know, you can win a job out of that. If you guys want to support me, all I ask is that you like my videos, maybe even share them to people who might need them or just subscribe to my channel. If you're new to here, it really helps me and it goes a long way to monetizing my channel. All right, I gotta go. Video is probably like 15 minutes long. It's a big video, but thank you if you stuck up to here and I'm gonna see you guys in the stream later today.